Welcome to Punch TV. We are on our second annual Nerd Crawl. We're touring around Saskatoon, doing some activities that are super nerdy. And our first stop is right here at Create Cafe. It's a 3D printing place, and we are going to go and check it out. Come with us. I'm super pumped to be here. How awesome is this? Um, I'm here with Lance. Businesses are gonna use this for like keychains and stuff, but like just Joe Blow off the street can come in and be like, hey, I want like a Captain America helmet. And you can be like, yeah, we can do that. What are cool things that people are making here? Uh, we get a lot of prototyping. I mean, on the business sector anyways, we get lots of prototyping. Um, we do do some end use stuff. We did a job for an agricultural company that was 750 hours of printing, and we managed to do it all within eight days. And even though we were given a timeline of 14 days, which we thought was pretty iffy, but we managed to, to do that really well. And then from the consumer end, we get lots of customers coming in who, if they don't really know 3D printing, they might just print a little trinkets. They might print their own fidget spinner or something like that kind of try it out. Um, some other people come in with just little broken things, uh, broken bandsaw components, broken sewing machine components and stuff like that. And if they can bring us the broken pieces, then we can get our design from that. And then once it's done, we can improve it. If the part that broke was thin in a certain area, we can thicken it. We can print it in different materials to increase its strength and stuff like that. Basically, once the design's done, it can be customized in any way. Okay, that's awesome. There's like actually like nothing that you can't do. Like, it's really your imagination is the only limitation. Well, obviously this mask wants to be talked about. Please yeah. tell us what this is and uh, what it's all about. So this is a Reaper from a game called Overwatch. This is his mask, and uh, we printed this quite a while ago. Uh, we left it unfinished, didn't really do much with it. And then Duncan, one of our designers here, he does a lot of art stuff as well. So he did all the finishing on this, sanded it, did all the priming, all the painting and everything like that. And then after that, we did a couple other things. Um, this is from Zelda, and this was done with an airbrush. We just got an airbrushing kit, so Duncan, again, went at this and started doing this. So I think it looks awesome. Most people think it looks awesome. Duncan's it's really awesome. picky about it. She's like, oh, it's, it's not perfect. It's got to be perfect. But, I mean, it looks really good. And then we got the Captain America helmet as well. It's beautiful. We just did the initial painting of, so it's not done yet. So all this stuff is paintable? Yep. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of paints that you can use. Um, pretty much, they usually say on them what kinds of plastics they're good for, but I mean, you can you know, you know can go to Walmart and get paint that works, or you can use the airbrushing paints. Um, we have some of our things have been hand painted. If somebody is just learning about it and, and they want to get an idea of what's possible, are there any websites that you would recommend them have a look at? Yeah, there's a website called Thingiverse that's very good, and uh, it's probably up on one of these computers, but basically it's like the Google of 3D printable objects. So you can go on there, you can search up a car, and it'll show you know hundreds of different cars that people have designed and uploaded. If you want you know little diorama stuff, little cats and dogs and stuff like that, you can do that. If you need brackets for things, um, there's tons of GoPro stuff, camera equipment modifications. Uh, there's hundreds of thousands of things on there. If if you can think of it, it's probably on there in some form. So. And if you can't do that for yourself, is that a service that you guys provide? Yes, we do design here as well. We do artistic design, which is sort of free form sculpting, as well as uh, like CAD stuff. Um, we do pretty much anything. We've never really turned down any design job we've had, whether it's really small or really large. Our biggest design job was, took about two days of design to do. So regardless of what you have, you can have it fast. Okay, so this is the giant machine, and it is so cool. Um, we were just talking about like making campers and stuff, and you could make a boat, or you could make anything. Like it has so many applications. How long would it take to like print a camper? 
Well, something like a camper, we're hoping to have a print time of around 24 hours for the final models. Right now, um, we kind of have to do a lot of tuning on it, make sure we know how everything's working. This is very experimental. The pellet extruder this machine uses is still in the R&D phase, and we're doing product develop or we're like developing it with the guy who, who made the pellet extruder. So there's still lots of work to do, but eventually down the road it could do you know upwards of 100 pounds an hour of plastic cool so like the other machines that we looked at like the printed and the other stuff they use like a filament spool right so this is just like little blobs of plastic yeah basically the filament that most 3d printers print they take pellets and just extrude it into filament so when you're paying you know the average of 30 dollars a spool usually what you're paying for is all the processes that go involved that are involved in turning it into filament putting on a spool and shipping it and all that but when you go to just base pellets you go from thirty dollars a kilogram down to a couple dollars a kilogram so if you're printing something that weighs a thousand pounds at three dollars a pound that's way more feasible than thirty dollars a pound so you guys printed this for us it's a little punch keychain so uh, one lucky winner out there if you uh, comment on our Facebook or on Twitter that you want this you can have one I might fight you for it but it, uh, you, uh, maybe I'll give it up willingly it's really cool so you could have a camper that had like this like just carved into the side or whatever you want it right yeah that's another feature we'll have uh, in addition to the base few models that we'll have that anyone can just come in and buy the customer can sit down with our designers and fully customize their camper in any way that they want if they want the bathroom in a different spot if they want the kitchen bigger if they only want one bed instead of two whatever they want any design elements they might want on the exterior of it anything they want we can basically do to the product before it's developed so okay I'm very excited about this we might have to start like some kind of Kickstarter campaign for the punch camper <laughs> so stay tuned for details on uh, how you might contribute to getting Jody the bossest <laughs> camper ever 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 well thank you for showing us around I think I am ready to have a cup of tea now at the uh, counter there because there's lots of good teas and coffees here too while you're waiting for your stuff to print so let's go check that out so in addition to the uh, awesome 3D printing and stuff they do here, they oh, you can also get a coffee. So uh, what, are you, what are you gonna make for us today, man? Uh, I think I'll make you a uh, ice dirty chai. That sounds pretty good to me. So uh, describe what you're doing uh, while you're doing it. Now we've got our uh, chai syrup. We're just gonna add that to the ice. Just a little bit to give it some more flavor. And then we gotta hit it with that milk. Nice thing with ice drinks is they're pretty easy to make because everything's got to be cold. And then from this point, we bring it over to our fancy dancy Swiss built espresso machine. So a Swiss built, not printed in house. Not yet. We should talk to them about that though. So it was a little bit to import. But basically the nice part about this machine is we use Intelligentsia Black Cat Espresso and it's actually specially matched with this machine and you just calibrate it once and then there's basically a mini barista in here that does all the work for us. Let me out, she says. It's a he. Let me out, he says. <laughs> and now just pour the espresso on top and then we'll mix it up and you'll have a delicious beverage to drink. Sweet, thanks man. Delicious. Okay, so there is something very special about this printer. Tell us about it. Yes, this is the prototype of the Create 3D, which is a 3D printer we're developing. So all of our printers, because they're all different, they all have different nuances and different things that happen to them and different ways you gotta fix them and different firmware issues and blah, blah, blah. So we want one printer that can basically replace all of our printers so everything becomes much simpler, easier to use. And because it's our own, we can design it any way we want. So this has a massive 500 by 500 millimeter build area and it prints 300 millimeters tall so this would allow us to do jobs like uh, the agricultural job we did that was 750 hours of printing instead of being done in eight days could have been done in about half that time if we had this machine available to us and then the other thing we want to do with this is because it's developed in house by us it's very very cheap to produce all the teal stuff on here is all 3d printed so it's got a lot of 3d printed components on it which also helps keep the cost down 
down so that we can hopefully get this into schools and universities and stuff like that. Because right now most printers are too expensive for a school to buy, say, 20 of. But if you can get them cheap enough, a school buying 20 3D printers is more feasible and it's much more accessible for all the students to use. It's not like one class has one printer that gets used for a couple hours a day. Something like this could be running all the time in a print farm effectively that can all be automated as well. Cool. Okay, so tell your teacher that this is what you want to do in class and maybe they can uh, get in touch with you and say, hey, let's get on board. Exactly. Awesome. It's very cool. Well, thank you for showing us so many cool things today. I, my mind is reeling. I know I'm going to be dreaming about 3D printing tonight for sure. So uh, hopefully I'll bring some of the designs in and you can print them up for me. Yeah, sounds good. really super cool. We're off to our next stop, so uh, while we're in travel mode, check out these important messages. You're squeezing me. Oh, my hips. Oh, my hips. Okay, I'm comfortable now. This is actually not bad. It's quite nice. It's a little cozy. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. Hello, lovely ladies and or dudes. It's me, Hank, and I'm here with Tony. Hello. For another edition of Tweetbeat, today on Tweetbeat, we're going to talk about uh, some brand new things that you should be watching, reading, listening to, playing. So without further ado, I give to you, one of us are going to read some tweets. All right. So today on the beat of the tweet, we're starting off with the best movie we've seen all year. It's Baby Driver. That's right, Baby Driver is a must-see movie, 92 out of 100. The working title of the sequel is The Tale of Griff. He fell from a bridge over troubled water. <gasps> You'll get that after you watch the show, but really, car chases and guns in perfect sync with a killer soundtrack? What more could you want? What more could you you ask for and speaking of weird in the Bad Batch film Arlen goes on a trip through Texas looking for her dream and a killer barbecue joint too bad all the meat tastes like chicken 71 out of a hundred and hint people are eating people a girl gives an arm and a leg for this film, but it's one of those that you'll either love it or you'll hate it. There is no in-between, but if you're looking for the weird, definitely check it out. Now it's family movie time, and honestly, we were hoping for a unicorn, but we got a goat instead. A cute goat, but still uh, a goat. Despicable Me 3. 56 out of 100. The little tykes, they'll be all over this. They'll be laughing, they'll be crying, they'll be running to the washroom 48 times, they'll be spilling popcorn and drinks on you. But the older kids, yeah, not so much laughing, not so much. So you've been warned. Now, Cars 3 proves that Lightning McQueen can strike three times and... Unlike Cars 2, this movie hits closer to the target, 78 out of 100, the Pizza Planet truck shows up again, this one is fun for the whole family, and speaking of the worst movie that we have seen all year, Transformers The Last Night. Now The Last Night proves that the Transformers franchise has gone past its prime, a generous 27 out of 100, and that's right, Dean, Mike, Bradley and I, we sat through this waste of money so you don't have to. Don't go. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Oh, and it's so not appropriate for the younger kids. So that about wraps things up. So for everything you should be watching, reading, listening to, playing, please follow us at Hank and Kelso and at Shaw Punch TV. <laughs> My name is Hank. This is Tony. Hi, See guys. you next time. See you later. Thank you. Tweet beat. Tweet beat.
Well, there's nothing more nerdy in the summertime in Saskatchewan than garage sales. And Lord knows a lot of my collection came from garage sales scouring many, many, many miles and many hours on early Saturday mornings. And I kind of had to go cold turkey after a while because it got to be too much. But we stumbled on this one this morning and we could not help but stop. So I'm here with Bonnie from The Stand and we are at the uh, St. Joe's garage sale. Tell me about this event. Is it a yearly thing or is this something new for you guys? It's going to be a yearly thing. This is our first year. Um, the Stand Community Organizing Centre is a fairly new place. Um, I'm actually a board member of the Treaty 6 Justice Collective, which is a non-profit that started about three years ago um, for the purpose of, of uh, managing the Stand in partnership with Turning the Tide Bookstore. So we're pretty new. This is our first year, but we plan to do it again next year and we're learning a lot this year. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so mark your calendars for next year. It's going to be a big event. Um, what does the stand do? Tell me about some of the stuff that you've done in the community. Well, the Treaty 6 Justice Collective operates the stand as a way of supporting the collective efforts of people and organizations that are working towards social, environmental, and economic justice. So one of the things we do is provide low-cost meeting and co-working space to people that are doing this type of work. We have a community organizing fund that can be accessed to subsidize subsidize the cost of using the space and also provide small amounts of funding for groups that um that, uh, you know, if they need uh, help printing posters uh -huh. or different materials like that. Um, because there's a lot of groups doing important work in the community that um, aren't able to access funding, and so we're, we're working to support them. Okay, that is awesome. Um, yeah, noble stuff happening. So if somebody wants to get involved to volunteer or to be involved with an event, or maybe they have a, an awesome thing that they want to put forward that's, you know, meets this criteria, how do they get um, involved? Well, you could uh, check out our website, it's thestandcenter.ca, or on Facebook, uh, same name, uh, or stop by the stand, which is in the same space as Turning the Tide at 615 Main Street. Um, send us an email at organize at thestandcenter.ca. Um, we are happy when people reach out to us to get involved, to find, tell us about the work that they're doing. Um, our, our, our work is about, uh, you know, pooling collective efforts and community resources so that we can achieve the kind of change that needs to happen in our community. Awesome. All right. Everybody, unite. You've got the deets. We'll put them on our website as well in case you missed all that. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you. And I hope you make lots of money. I'm hoping to now go and scour all these tables. I saw a few goodies there. So I hope there's enough room in the boot to store all this stuff. Um, hopefully I can make a contribution to the cause and uh, uh, best of luck with your garage sale today. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Oh my god. Nice. It's like uh, Elliot from ET. Doesn't he wear this? Donnie Darko? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't check what's in the microwave. I didn't check what's in the microwave. Let's play the, the game. What's in the microwave? <laughs> and we have a... Ho! Oh. Yeah. You don't want to know. Yeah. You don't want to know. Is this one of these things that's worth a million dollars? Is this the vintage... Um, G.I. Joe or something? Yeah, yes, the Regal G Admiral G.I. Joe. Yeah, or it's uh, maybe a commemorative Prince Charles uh, doll. I don't know, ask the collector, what's no, this worth? it's garbage, it's worth nothing. <laughs> it's not anything at all, it's worth nothing. I, I've been hoodwinked again by the collector. Hey, you make kids wear this in your costume. <laughs> yeah. I want to wear that costume. <laughs> I was gonna buy that. I was gonna buy that for you. Out of the way! Oh my god! Majestic! What is this? That is a uh, flip it around. It's a toilet seat oh. cover. Everywhere you go, Star Wars is everywhere. You can't get away from it. 
It's everywhere. I'm kind of getting sick of it, actually. No more, no Star more. Wars. What is that? So you got the roll, right? And then you use with the potty that I had up to my face right there. There's a cute little, <laughs> there's a monster here to tell you to how to use the toilet paper. I think this kid's on LSD. All right, all right. Well, the kid's very happy. They're too small, otherwise these would be mine. These would be mine. Too small. I could try to put them on, but they're just, just too small. Otherwise, you would see some serious good times. Do we have popcorn that we can test this out with? How do we know? I think we need, we need a demonstration. Yeah, how do we know it works, right? I'm not sure what this is. If this could be some kind of like My Little Pony knockoff. I'm not sure. It is pony. It has the thing. Hey, is this a knockoff from My Little Pony, guys? Oh, check you out what the know. brony found know. here. Tony the brony with his My Little Pony. <laughs> I Cute. love it. Oh man, check it out. Laser maze. Oh, I might have to get this. Ignite your mind. Ignite your mind. Here you go, right here. It's the George Foreman lean green, lean, mean fat that grilling machine. machine. I'll grill my fat. Yeah. Oh man, I always wanted one of those. Spicy. Hmm? Had some spice to it. Oh yeah. Savory. Right here. Well, I don't know about you guys, but all that garage sale made me hungry. So, uh, what do you say to a Cubana and maybe a little pinball at uh, Pokey's Pinball Cafe? Yeah? Yeah. All right, we'll meet you there. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. Super excited to be at Pokey's Pinball Cafe with Pokey himself, Jason Carroll, owner, operator. Um, tell me the impetus behind opening this mecca. Uh, well, um, worked a soul-sucking corporate job for many, many years and got laid off and decided to open this place. Well, you are my pinball hero because I love pinball and there's never enough of it and there's been a lot of drought of pinball in Saskatoon. It needed a huge injection. So um, how did you get like all the machines and stuff? I've just been buying and selling for about nine years now, fixing them up and uh, yeah, putting them out on location for people to enjoy. It's awesome. Okay, so you're on 33rd in the hood. Love it. Um, we're seeing a real revitalization of this area area with like opening places like this. How has the neighborhood reacted to the cafe? Ah, we've been well received. It's uh, nothing really was here for families to come and you know nice relaxing atmosphere, very bright. So uh, yeah, we've got a bunch of local clientele that love, love that we're doing it and I'm super ecstatic to be on 33rd. Yeah, it's good. Um, I just 
had the Cubana sandwich. It was delicious. How do you not love like shredded chicken and cheese all in this creamy tomatoey sauce? It's fantastic. Um, all of the food kind of has a Cuban flair. What made the decision to go that way? Well, uh, after a, after I got laid off, I took a three-week trip and traveled around Cuba and got to enjoy all the local fare. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's great food. It's, it's uh, well put together. The tastes complement each other. It's not super spicy, but it's not bland. So nobody else, or nobody was doing it in Saskatoon. So I figured, yeah, let's go that direction. Uh, Christie's Bakery down the street provides us with all our bread. And it's just fantastic. So, yeah, it was a good combo. Awesome. It's good to see the neighborhood supporting each other. The food is delicious. Like, you got to come in and try it. Um, there's definitely more things on the menu that I want to try out. But my belly is only so big, so that'll have to be another date. Um, what is your favorite pinball machine of all time? Oh, of all time? I don't know if I could pin it on one because there's so many great ones. I go through different periods where I'm really enjoying this one or really enjoying that one. And right now, I think it's got to be Medieval Madness and The Walking Dead and our new one, Full Throttle. And I'm really looking forward to Star Wars. I saw on Facebook that you're getting a Star Wars machine, so like, brain is exploding, yeah. can't wait. Um, what game, video game or pinball game, are you most proficient at? Um, I'm getting uh, pretty good at The Walking Dead. That's probably the one I play the most right now. So uh, I'm getting better and better in competition. I really enjoy playing it as well. And uh, yeah, people are afraid to play me at that game for sure. <laughs> now, in, in addition to the cafe and having the machines and just a casual fun, you also host like tournament play here too, right? Yeah, I'm also the president of the Saskatchewan Association of Pinball Players. And we get together monthly and compete at a more serious level, I guess. And uh, uh, every year we send somebody to the North American Championships and that's a rotating, uh, it's always in the United States, but uh, we've sent yeah, people in for the last three years in a row and uh, the boys have had a great time and represented Saskatchewan quite well. So. Okay, good. So if somebody's like interested in getting involved with the Pinball Association, how do they, how do, they do that? Where they, can they get involved? Uh, well, we got posters up around town with some info. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, the uh, Saskatchewan Association of Pinball Players, or also just follow the cafe page, uh, Pokies Pinball Cafe, and we always post all the pinball related stuff on there. So. Hey, cool. Well, I'm super stoked and I'm ready to like play some pinball, get my flippers going. So uh, I'm going to excuse myself while we go and do that. Thank you for hosting us today and letting us come. This is a great place. Uh, thanks guys a lot for coming and I'm glad you guys enjoyed the food. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. up another episode of Punch TV. We had an awesome time at Pokey's Pinball Cafe. Who had the high score? Who's the winner? Not Hank. me. Hank. Here. Hank is the grand champion. Hank, you win a Punch TV kitchen! Oh, that's awesome! So good. Uh, we had a lot of fun today on the Nerd Crawl. We hope you guys had as much fun as we did as well. I want to say a big thank you to Create Cafe and, of course, to Pokies and to the folks at the garage sale. And, uh, yeah, lots to look forward to in the future. Our next episode is going to be our best of. And then after that is the start of a brand new season, season three for Punch TV. So thank you for tuning in. And uh, in the meantime, keep your dukes up. Some kind of puzzle. I'm puzzled. Don't don't let my kids see this, okay? Embarrassing. Dad doesn't know how to do this. Yeah, fair enough.